Does all the training that you've done for balance not help your balance at all? Maybe. We're going to find out more because of the two guys that are sitting next to me here on today's episode of the Movement Movement Podcast, the podcast for people who want to know the truth about what it takes to have a happy, healthy, strong body, starting with the feet first because that is your foundation. We break through the mythology, the propaganda, and sometimes the flat-out lies that you may have been told about what it takes to run, to walk, to dance, to play, to do CrossFit, yoga, to climb mountains, whatever it is that you do enjoyably and efficiently um, by using your body naturally. I'm Stephen Sashin from Zero shoes.com your host for today and seemingly pretty much every day because this is what I do and um, before we get started you know the drill if you like what you hear or see then like and share and subscribe and tell your friends and send up hot air balloons and use carrier pigeons smoke <laughs> signals whatever it takes to let people know about the podcast you know our goal here is to help make natural movement the obvious better healthy choice the way natural food is we are creating a movement movement and we would love for you to be a part of that if you want to be part of the tribe please subscribe and do all those other things so welcome um, i'm going to let you two guys introduce yourselves okay. because if i say stuff it bores the crap out of me uh <laughs> and so um you could decide who you can like do rock paper scissors to decide who's going to start okay i got the scissors uh, um <laughs> hi my name is tom verdon i'm one of the co-founders of nimble science um our pause mission... nimble N-Y-M-B-L. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your nimble science. Uh, our mission is prevent a million falls, and we do that through improving people's balance. And obviously the focus of the company is on older adults uh, who, as they age, uh, their balance declines. Um, fantastically, there's a lot that can be done about that. Nathan Estrada over here is our clinician. Why don't you introduce yourself? So I'm Nathan Estrada. I'm a physical therapist by training and realized a long time ago that uh, what we're giving older adults actually doesn't meet their needs. And um, specifically when it comes to balance, uh, a lot of what people consider balance training, frankly, just doesn't work. Doesn't work. Well, let me start by saying many of you know this. The, this is a, an issue that's near and dear to my heart. It was a few years ago that my father, who had been in motion control, padded athletic shoes, well, actually dress shoes mostly. He lived in dress shoes. My dad was the male version of Amel DeMarco. Suffice it to say, uh, he, at one point, he was about 80 years old, was walking down a hallway in a little shopping area, tripped over a little ledge that was about this high, fell down, broke his hip, and was dead two weeks later. Mm. And this is something that was clearly preventable. He shuffled when he walked. He really didn't have much balance. And uh, so, and, and and that happened actually after I knew you. Um, so it was just sort of coincidental in a weird way that that happened. But Tom and I had already known each other and wanted to help with this issue. And then it you know struck me personally. Now, before we jump into what you guys are doing and how it's going to be relevant for everybody, we always like to start with a movement on the Movement Movement podcast. And uh, Nathan, you had something you wanted to have human beings do. So what I'd love you to do is I would love you to stand up. And I'd love you they to They might squat. be in their cars, dude. We're but it's do... okay. I'd like you to stand up in your car. <laughs> if you're not and... going to do that, I thought we were going to do... We were gonna no, do... we are. Oh, but okay. remember, you have to do two things at once. It's not just this. Oh, got it. All right. So All right. whatever you're doing, do it well. If, and... So wait, if you're in your car yeah. and you have a sunroof, open the sunroof, stand up in your car. Is that the instruction? I think it sounds great. Right. And go ahead and let go of the wheel. And I want you to point <laughs> at I, one I am not thumb. responsible for any of this. If anything happens, it's all Nathan. And then I want you to very quickly point to the opposite thumb wait, and go on, wait, back on. and forth as fast as you can. And you can't just do this. Good oh, try, That's pretty Tom. funny. <laughs> Good try. That's pretty funny. Uh, damn, wait, I, I ended up like this. There you go. Hold on, wait. Okay, hold um, on. And what that does is it's actually taking advantage of the fact the brain doesn't like to do things unilaterally. It wait, likes symmetry. I did it better. I was doing it better when I first started, and then it got worse. I, I just think you had fooled yourself that you were done better. Now that we can see the video, you're now just being held accountable to the right way. Oh, that's a good point, actually. So why would human beings want to do this, and what are you learning from doing this other than the fact that, geez, man, do not try – this is a good sobriety test. It but, is, in fact. Well, I mean, the key aspect of it is the human body has a pattern that it likes to do things, right? The natural way tends to be what is the healthy way. Okay. Um, and so you obviously believe in that, and that's your dogma. But that same thing happens with how we prefer to move and specifically what patterns we use when something goes awry. Right. So stumbling is a something going awry, and the brain has a natural pattern to do that. We somehow have this arrogance that we can train something different than what nature designed. And as a result of that, we tend to train balance 
which is actually a falsehood. What we actually want to do is remind the body what it does really well, Naturally. which is what is natural. Well, I want to pause because where the the intro that I thought of for this of you know what you're doing for balance doesn't work. <laughs> what I was thinking of is the whole the whole um, trend that's been going on for a while about instability training. So using so doing squats while standing on a on an exercise ball or you know all, all those various things. And I know that the scientific evidence is really clear that you do not get stronger by working on those smaller you know muscles. What's the word that you the accessory or accessory secondary muscles, muscles. Right. which you know is not mm -hmm. actually the case that just doing the, if you're going to do a bench press doing it on an actual bench is better than doing it you know with your back on yeah. a ball so um, that was where I was going with that did you have uh, somewhere else that you were going to take that idea well here's a here's well I'll continue that one as well but sometimes I go on this specific aspect of it that if you can think about what you're doing it's not reflexive so right. it's the equivalent of telling someone, I want you to hold up your arch while you're walking. Right. Right. It's a fallacy of belief that you have that ability. Balance is that same way. It's a reflex that has to be available all the time. And by convincing yourself that if I focus on it, mm -hmm. somehow that that focus is going to affect a reflex, uh, that's in two different parts of the brain. One's executive function. One's in cerebellum. They really don't have great connection when it comes to stumbling. Right. And so having someone focus on balance doesn't actually improve their ability to stop themselves from falling. Well, I'm, I'm curious, it, it just occurred to me, as a former All-American gymnast and a, and a former martial artist, and only former, I gotta, the reason I'm a former martial, well, a former All-American gymnast, because I'm 57 years old and I have problems with my spine and shoulders and you know all these things that old gymnasts have. Because you were a gymnast. Because yeah. I was a yeah. gymnast, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the reason I'm a former martial artist is because, um, not surprisingly, I like to point out where people are stuck about things. Mm -hmm. And so when I was doing Aikido, for example, I first learned to do Aikido and started training with people who were just wanted to learn, does this really work? Like, is this a real martial art or is this just a glorified dance with pretty clothing? Mm. And so we were really, you know, kind of working the problem. And But the, when I would train with people who weren't part of my little clicky community in the New York Aikikai, um, and I would take these black belts, you know, where they couldn't move me because they weren't getting me off balance or whatever, and I would just, you know, kind of point out that they couldn't move me and then they would get really offended and then try and break my arm and I realized that the odds of my personality changing was about zero so <laughs> I had to get off the mat and stop putting myself in dangerous situations uh, so but my point for bringing that up is as a result of doing those two things I know the times that I stumble I do things that other humans don't typically do I yeah. roll out I do things that that I definitely trained in some way that became arguably reflexive correct so you you trained a motor pattern that was successful yeah. right uh, the problem is that that happened naturally and so if if you want to that that natural occurrence to actually happen yeah you have to do it while you're distracted and here's what i mean by that is you trained years of doing that flow while you were thinking about something else or continuing on to something else what that allowed you to do is to learn that pattern as a reflex if you had thought about it the whole time it right. never would transition interesting a lot of it actually think about the as a gymnast more than uh as an aikidoka Thank you. Wow, that's quite a word. I haven't used that in 40 years. Um, but uh, as a gymnast in particular, the biggest thing is that what you're, the way you end up training to deal with falls is that you're in the middle of the air about, you know, heading towards your head mm -hmm. and you got to figure out what to do to not die. And um, it, it, it's amazing what happens to time in those mm -hmm. moments. Yeah. Self-preservation is a powerful thing, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, and you act upon that. But going back to your whole thing of Olympic events helping balance, right? Right. Uh, when's the last time you stumbled standing on a BOSU ball? Oh. Right? Uh, it, it, it's not natural in any way. No. And grass doesn't mimic that. People Correct. stumble because they catch that little lip in right. the sidewalk. Right. It's not the Olympic thing. So training these really extravagant movements doesn't translate to those simple small ones a the, lot of times. The, uh, the, the place where I stumble the most is... Um, uh, left leg first, right leg into my underwear. That is usually where I catch a toe and, you know, all hell breaks loose. Maybe a little bit looser garment would be helpful in that situation. <laughs> I am wearing bikini briefs, <laughs> so that's a really interesting point. Actually, it doesn't matter because, okay, when I get home, the first thing I do is I take off my pants and I take off whatever underwear I happen to be wearing and I switch into, like, these like really loose yoga shorts. But I, I catch my toe in those, too. That's super funny. Yeah, I just thought I'd share. So, <laughs> so I want to back up um, a, a little bit because I want to dive more into in, into what you're saying. But I want to start with the what Nimble Science is doing. You're working with predominantly older adults, mm -hmm. correct? And um, so, talk and tell people why and what the what the problem is, the extent of the problem, and what you're actually doing to be helpful. Mm -hmm. And you might want to say something because you just haven't shut up since we got on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about where the company started. Um, I met. 
a, um, a doctor, spine surgeon in the south of France, and he'd been studying in his clinic balance for about 35 years. And he said, Tom, all these older adults are falling. It's, and, first, let's start yeah. there. The coincidence that your name was Tom yeah. is incredible. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, <laughs> he was just talking. He's, but, and and yeah. he said, um, you know, this is a huge healthcare problem. Um, yeah. It's a $40 billion problem in the U.S. Uh, it's going to get much worse as all of us boomers age. Um, and quite frankly, the, the insurance industry does not know what to do about it. Right. They're actually kind of freaking out about it because um, they're seeing check after check after check being written for replacing hips and, and things of that nature. Um, and anyway, so Dr. Farsi, who is another one of the co-founders, he said, I know how to do this. Um, I've been studying my clinic, but we need to be able to get this out into the real world. Um, and uh, I worked at Apple for a long time. He goes, well, I'm the, I'll give the science. You take the technology piece and let's form a company. So that's how, that's why, that's how Nimble Science got, got founded. So the, the business was intertwined immediately with the mission. Right. The, and, you know, the theory was if we can prevent a million falls, which is our mission, we're also going to be able to make a lot of money doing that because uh, the alternative is, is basically paying people to fix people's broken bones and concussions. And actually, unfortunately... Um, you know, take him out of the emergency room and in the in the wrong door. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a um, a rather morbid joke. My, so my dad, uh, he had his hip replaced and was fine two days later and dead yeah. four days later. Uh, yeah. And I said to the doctor, "Is there an aftermarket for barely used hips?" And of course, yeah. which I, mean, I know that sounds you know horrible and morbid, but actually it really is sort of amazing. They took this expensive piece of hardware yeah. that had really not been used and then buried it. Which is just sort of stunning yeah. to me. Yeah, and not not that we're going to have you know hips on, that you can buy on eBay, but 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 I think what you're really saying is that it's it's stunning that we would spend so much yeah. after, yeah, yeah, but yeah, be yeah. willing so unwilling to think about yeah. what could we do before. Absolutely. Right. Right. Well, it never even came up in conversation. So all right, so you got the, you got this idea, um, and clearly um, there's it, it's a very big deal. Um, and what happened next, or and you know what led? When was this? How long ago? This was so we we started on the science about five years ago. Okay. We started on building the business about say three years ago. Got it. Terms of, yeah. Healthcare takes a long time. <laughs> it's just the way it works. Well, uh, it's, it, they always say it's 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 twice as long and three times as much money to get a company going in healthcare than you think you would. Um, well, you're dealing with these yeah. giant insurance companies and, that are and, very slow and to human move. beings as well. Humans. Oh, I've heard of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they fall sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Humans. Um, so, so yeah, we had to go through a process. The process was, um, how do you take what was in Dr. Farsi's brain, mm -hmm. which was dual tasking, which we'll talk a lot more about, um, the the concept of building the reflexive balance, and getting it into an app, and then getting in front of. St we started with maybe ten people, and then you build it up. And there's two things you got to do. One, you got to get, get the science right. Two, you got to get the interface right. Right. Um, if you're dealing with older adults, you try and put one button on the, on a screen. So to be clear, yep. what the thing you were trying to do is take this information and turn yep. it into an app. Yeah. You Apple boy. <laughs> and uh, okay. And so uh, so continue from there. Yeah. So to do that, so this what we had to get the app to do was um, seem very simple, doing a lot of complex things. Right. Okay. The simplicity is, I've got ten minutes of my day I'll devote to balance and. Uh, what, what the studies show is you're not going to spend an hour going to a balance class. Right. You will spend 10 minutes a day right after your coffee, right after your breakfast, if because it, it's so important to you because that fall is going to take you from your home into some place you don't want to go. Right. Right. And you can have the conversation with your children, the conversation which nobody would. That's what the greatest fear is. That's a very motivational fear for a lot of older keeping, adults. Keeping people like, out of If a, I can improve my balance 10 minutes a day right. and not have to have the conversation... I will so, do that 10 minutes a day. <laughs> air quotes. The conversation is the when do we put mom or dad in Thank assisted you. living. Yeah. yeah. So, so, the, so um, we, had, we had to get this so it worked and it was fun. Right. Okay. The cool thing is that the cognitive exercises, which, is, which are half the dual tasking, are engaging. They're fun. They're trivia. They're math problems. They're video games. They're things that are naturally engaging. And there's people who made a lot of money off of selling engaging 
products like that, right? Like Trivial Pursuit, right? So you put that and oh, you, you just dated yourself. Sorry, does that still exist? Uh, I have no <laughs> idea. I mean, but it does. I played it recently. You can buy it in Target. Really? I did. Yeah, um, you're a younger human yeah, being. Yeah, I'm. I am older than you by a couple. Are you really? Of years. I am. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because you gave your your age. Oh yeah. I'm not giving mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just kind of hinted. So all right. Any, but suffice um, it to say. So yeah. So the gist of it is. So the app's got things to engage people cognitively, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. and then there's other things they're doing physically. The physical exercises and the combination is what where the magic happens. Got it. That's where the reflexive balance gets retrained. Now I want to. Uh, I'm going to do this. Um, if, if Jim Sloman, um, who we talked to on the podcast a few weeks ago is listening to this he might lose his mind because <laughs> his idea is that when you're doing balance you want to be doing balance but because uh, so like if you're on the slack block that he developed you know balance is the thing but he's also dealing with a very different population with people who for example on the slack block you're going to stand on one foot mm-hmm. um, and you're dealing with people who can often not even stand very well yeah. so a whole Correct. different game I, yeah I think maybe you want to talk about what balance is yeah I mean so point? when yeah. you're looking at Performance enhancement. Uh, sorry, I said Jim Sloman. I meant Jim Klopman. Sloman okay. is a friend of mine from some well, other place, funny. but lives like down the street from it's two gyms who live near each other. Jim's okay. So yeah. what you do yeah. in, a, in a training <laughs> mentality, so as a physical therapist, I'm actually a board certified sports specialist, and I started my career in professional sports and adolescence. And it's important to know that if you want someone to be above average, it takes an enormous amount of energy input to get people to the next level. Right. And that's where complexity and Olympic type training really comes in. Older adults are on the opposite end of the spectrum. They've lost basic ability right. for normal gait characteristics. So this is not an enhancement. This is a return to normalcy. Right. And as a result of that, it does take a different approach because the outcome and the desired outcome is vastly, vastly different. Um, so actually, I agree with both of us. Where if you want that outcome, that's the path you go. Right. But in our population, we want people to simply be able to lift their feet so they don't stumble. Right. And not to necessarily have the event, the ability to to do opa dancing in Greek and to jump right. and tap one foot. My, boy, now you, that's my mom was sort of famous for doing things like that into her seventies, um, nice. which was just always scared the crap out of me. <laughs> um, so, uh, Tom, you asked Nate to talk about what balance mm-hmm. is. What the hell's balance? <laughs> so balance is a three-stage process. Okay. Right? And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we think of balance as strength. If I work on a muscle for six weeks, it's enough stimulation to tell the brain to, mo- to grow a muscle fiber. Right. Uh, balance, on the other hand, is a process. And you have to first sense that you're falling. And so the alarm system that tells you you're falling is made up of three senses, vision, inner ear, and joint. As we age, all three of those senses get blunted or numbed. Oh, don't give me the good news. Right? <laughs> right. But what? Do, I didn't hear you. And so here's what happens is an older adult, even if they do balance training, never feels themselves falling. So you ask them, what happened? And they go, I don't know. The first thing I knew is my face hit the ground. They never felt the fall. Interesting. And if you don't feel it, you can't have a plan and you can't react to it. Right. So if you really want to prove someone's balance, you have to first relearn what those what three senses like. feel like. Interesting. So that you can sense it. The second one is then the cerebellum has to have a plan of action. A lot of older adults stop doing dynamic movements. They tend to do straight plane. I'm walking or I'm right. doing transfers. Well, bounce reactions are stepping in multiple reactions, stepping over and doing all these things. And if the kind of the key indicator of success is when's the last time you had to do it. Hmm. So, for instance, if I put your hand on a stove... You couldn't think faster to pull your hand off. That's right. a reflex. Right. But if you touched a warm stove yesterday, your brain would react more quickly, and it would actually withdraw with less information. How much? How much? It's interesting when when I talk to people about um, like barefoot walking, barefoot running. So I got I basically started going barefoot twelve years ago or so, yeah. and um, people often think that what has to happen is that your skin gets. Uh, um, uh, thicker. The callus is some yeah, kind yeah, of miracle is, yeah, of com- skin growth. Completely yeah. not true. Um, <laughs> but uh, but the thing that I, I say is is that what started happening, my feet got more flexible. I got more responsive. And I said, I don't have any evidence for this, but it feels like my reflex arc improved and got faster. Mm-hmm. And if that's true, um, that means the reflex arc is not something that goes all the way to my cerebellum. It's cool. like from my feet to the base of my spine and back. Correct. So the reflex for those basic foundational postural holds yeah. that we need all the time don't go that high right but if you were going to react to a change of your environment it would have to go to your cerebellum for the reaction 
Interesting. Um, I'm going to have to get a cerebellum one of these days. <laughs> so you've got this app that has people doing various mental things while they're doing, and it's guiding them for the physical things as well. Correct. So what are the examples of some of the things you're having them do when they're doing the, their version of their version of whatever it is? Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, but, well, you could have a lot of fun, and you could actually do a more challenging version of that, which is going forward with one hand and backwards with the oh, other. Oh, that one actually, I, I can do that really easily. Um, in fact, I do that on the track Perfect. with my arms. But this one is just killing me for some reason. Yeah, so it's right. important to know that you know, dual tasking, we talked about it's simple movements. It's normal movements. It's right. stepping movements. It's lunging movements. It's sit to stand. Mm. It's putting your feet in different positions that you might find yourself in that would make you normally unsteady and building your tolerance for that over time, along with cognitive challenges that start from easy to hard. And the reason why it's, it has to be simple, because if it doesn't happen in nature, it's not a natural pattern. And so that's when Olympic events aren't that helpful. Right. Is if I'm losing my bounce to the left, I don't have to jump. I simply step to the left to regain. Right. So what we're doing is we're doing simple stepping to the left then. Um, so those are some great examples. Uh, we have six different categories of exercise that we really focus on and we move people through and then a whole kind of slew of cognitive things. But it's not as challenging. The real magic is in the progression. In other words, you and I would never do the same thing forever. It's boring as hell, right? You wouldn't do the same podcast twice. Um, I, I don't even like to use the same letter in the alphabet more than once. Or exactly. Twice a <laughs> so the human, I've, sto I've stopped using yeah. the number three entirely. Novelty <laughs> and variety are nice. the only way that we learn. Right. Novelty and variety. And so you have to have constant variability in movement if you're truly going to learn. So let me ask you this question. One of the things that I point out is that we often mislabel uh, a couple of experiences which lead to problems with learning and that is you're trying to do some new movement pattern and it feels frustrating mm -hmm. and people go oh I don't like this because it's hard yeah. and I go no, no the frustrating thing is just the experience of laying down new neural pathways and if you think yep. about it you'll, you'll remember that if you then you get frustrated doing this thing for you know however many minutes a day then you don't do anything for a day or two and then you come back and suddenly it's somehow a little better mm -hmm. even though you weren't doing anything it's the rest periods where it integrates and starts mm -hmm. to lay down these pathways legitimately and one gets stronger the other gets weaker talk to me about how if at all you you're factoring just that the neuro, neuro what's the word i want to use the neuroplasticity component of learning into what you're doing yeah i mean that's kind of the secret of everything right is um numbness to those patterns mm -hmm. uh, anything you don't do leaves you Right? Right. Anything you don't do leaves you. And it's our job to just reintroduce doing it again so that it doesn't leave you. From a neuroplasticity perspective, what we're really looking for is not these huge changes, but connections of falling to the right, step to the right, and feeling what that feels like. So right. my inner ear tells me that. And so it actually has more to do with the integration of the information than anything. Got it. So you're, you're not going to change your signals a whole lot. Right. But what signal you trust is the key indicator of your long-term outcome. Interesting. So how do you track progression over time and how does the app uh, change mm -hmm. what you're doing based on how you're progressing? Beautiful. So we do physical measures. Um, hopes and dreams are fun, but we want to see that you can actually physically do something at a better quality than you did at the first time. So is part of it that you just walk up behind people and start trying to knock them over? Perturbation training is a wonderful thing to do. Um, in fact, it, it, for some hospital systems, that would actually be a very lucrative thing to make a lot of money. Um, but, but it's true. It's, it's known change, right? You have right. to show someone that they were here. Now they're here as a result of what they invested. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just thinking so, this is a brilliant marketing plan. You just walk up to older people and you know, push well, them. Well, it, it, it would be them. very, very profitable. <laughs> It'd be profitable. In <laughs> today's healthcare system, that would be a great way <laughs> yeah. to make money. I'd like to take this a little bit to the, the user, what, what yeah. happens with them. Yeah, yeah. Think of uh, an older adult that's a little bit skeptical. You know, they, they want to work in their balance because they don't want to fall. Wait, and, I got to pause right there. Yeah. Remember when we were kids and the definition of older adult is how old we are now? Yeah. Okay, just wanted to um, point that out. Do you, anyway. you have to bring so, age into this? Well, why, is this part you of the keep using, Well, <laughs> yes, it is because that's what we're talking about, but it just occurred to me. Anyway, um, so they're a bit skeptical and like, okay, I'll do this 10 minutes a day. After a week or so, they start feeling a different. They, they actually feel more stable. Right. And that's when the magic happens is that um, – I do this thing, I kind of enjoy doing it. I feel more stable. I'm gonna to go to another exercise class now. 
I'm going to go to that meeting that I told my daughter I couldn't go to. I'm actually going to go to that birthday party. Right. And, you know, the, the first thing, the thing that creates falls is fear of falling. Oh, interesting. Right? If you're fearful of falling, you do fewer things. Therefore, you're, it's a self-fulfilling process. Got it, got it. So if you reduce the fear of falling because you're balanced, you feel better. And a lot of them say they feel cognitively better because they're working their brain and their body at the same time. Right. Then they start, and we've seen this in a lot of the independent living communities we work in, they start going to more, there's more populations going to yeah. more classes. And that's just brilliance for not just the person, but the entire community. Well, I think so what that's what, that's what yeah. to, the, to the people involved. Yeah, yeah. We talked a lot about the science, and I yeah. love talking about the science. But in terms of, um, wow, what did this do for me? What does this do to, to my life? It's amazing because they say, this is the first thing I've gotten better at mm. in oh, 10 years. That's really cool. I got better at something. Because right. everyone just tells me I'm getting worse. Okay? I got better at something. Yeah. Not just my balance. I like this, this tech thing. I'm, I'm okay with that now. I can do other tech things. So there's a whole psychological component that goes on there that's really positive to the whole reversing the cycle of falls. Right. You want to look I was going to say, I mean, the word for that's empowerment, right? It's getting away from reliance on people like me as a therapist right. and being able to be my own solution. Yeah. It's funny. When we started the company, um, we started Zero Shoes. We were selling a do-it-yourself sandal making kit. And we still sell it. It's oh, one of our best-selling products. And it's basically making something that's um, very similar to the footwear human beings were making 10,000 years ago, and probably before, but that's the oldest one we found. And um, I, I refer to doing that as developing the superpower of knowing how to make shoes. And I had a number of people that I've met over the years who said, you know, once I learned I could make my own footwear, I started repairing my car. Mm -hmm. I started, you know, not throwing Same, away things yeah. in my house that I could then fix. It really, it, it is amazing that when you give people that sense of accomplishment, how that really does bleed over into other parts of your life, mm -hmm. which I love. And same thing actually on, you know, on the natural movement side, when people start discovering they can actually move better, same idea. They, we hear from people all the time, I'm starting to do the, the, this list of things that I haven't done in God knows how long, which is really entertaining. Well, so I can only imagine that by now there are people who are watching slash listening to this who are thinking, cool, how can I get this to some person in my family or myself for whom this would be relevant? Um, what are you currently doing? How are you getting this out there? What are you trying to make happen next, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, I think the key aspect of it is we partner with organizations so that we can uh, treat people at scale. Okay. In other words, uh, while it's impactful to go to individuals, if we're really going to solve a million falls, we have to partner with organizations like medical insurance providers or hospital systems right. or different things like that and manage it because falls can be more complex than just bad balance. Right. right. If you're on 14 medications, for God's sake, see your doctor. Right. Right. Um, and then ask your doctor why you put me on 14 medications. And if they say you need all 14, go to a different doctor. Right. Um, so, but that being said, because it is complex enough, we do feel like you do need a third party involved that cares about your general wellness. Mm. So while as we improve someone's physical ability, we want someone to be looking at that larger picture as well as a partner in that. So that's why we do partner with other organizations. So the best way that you could do that would be help us and introduce us to that organization and empower right. us to go to them so that not only can we help you and your family and your loved ones, but then help your neighbor right. or your city or your state. But if you're already if you're already involved with certain organizations or certain healthcare <laughs> providers or insurance providers, um, is there a way of finding out what those are and becoming involved, or is it that you're finding some existing population? How, how does, how's that working currently? So currently we're in about 25 senior living environments. Uh, we it. start off in Colorado, so if you live in Boulder, odds are uh, Nimble's already there. Right. Um, now internationally we have some partners in that as well, but we're, we're growing there, so we're kind of in that growth phase. Uh, as far as a healthcare provider, 2020 MA plan year is when we're really launching the Nimble um, Healthcare. Got and it. as a result of that, we're in plans to be in three MA plans. Um, and Medi Medicare Advantage. Medicare Excuse Advantage you. plans. <laughs> and that should allow us to really impact a lot of people in a powerful way. Um, now, we're still in the final contract, so we actually can't release the names, but it's the minute we can, we'll send an addendum to you and we'll let the mm. people know. All right. So, I mean, I, I think that's all really cool. And I can also <laughs> imagine, though, that. Uh, especially just apps being what they are, that there is an opportunity or, I mean, ha have you tried just like handing the app to people and seeing what happens without that third party supervision? Yes, we have. In fact, you had to test it right. because the reality of it is, is what you want to know is if you give it to someone blindly, what right. do they do? Right. Mm -hmm. And um, will they will they download it? Will right. they will they register? And so we spent a long time going over um, older adult focus design. Right. Because if you don't get it right, it doesn't work. Yep. 
And so here's what we found, is that if someone has a concern for balance and they do nimble one exercise two days in a row, 95% of them continue doing it. Oh, interesting. So the interface met their needs. It was for them. I right. can do this. The 10 minutes something I could easily fit in my lifestyle. <laughs> so, but you know, look, I got to tell you, um, the idea that, yes, you're giving someone uh, a tool that would make it so they don't need to then use the previous tool and don't need to therefore pay. But to your point, if they're actually getting better balance, then, and if it's a gym-based program, there are other opportunities yeah. that show up. So they're going to end up there, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. We're going to be the on-ramp to wellness. You're going to, so now your, your next business is this whole new thing of um, uh, elder um, gyms or something where the equipment's a little more uh, older people friendly, um, where the trainers don't look like they're 25 and have never seen anything resembling body fat. Um, <laughs> I, I worked at a gym when I was, actually, geez, I just realized this. I was going to say I worked at a gym when I was in my early 20s in, in Manhattan, and they had the guy who sold everything was like, super gorgeous and had this incredible body. But then I just remembered, oh yeah, I was an all-American gymnast. I didn't have the super gorgeous part, but I had the body part back then. I've apologized <laughs> to my wife for not knowing me then. Um, oh, but, uh, but, but, I, but literally, I mean, the whole idea of having, and I'm not suggesting you do this as a business, but it is really interesting that I don't know, is there a you know gym franchise that really does cater to There adults? is. There's four what or the? five of them that are already kind of popping up, and Denver actually has a few. Oh, really? Um, my, I mean, as a, as a clinician, I have a a lot of colleagues that are doing geriatric CrossFit. <laughs> oh my God! Wait, hold on, hold on. I kid you not. No, I, I want to hear more about this. So think about this. So yeah, you yeah. imagine these big movements in CrossFit. Yeah. Why is it that we think that as we age, we're somehow incapable of big movements? Right. Um, and so doing press, doing these, you know, doing deadlifts, doing squats are all functional movements. That True. when you accept the fallacy that age results in automatic decline, well, you assume that, well, those things can't be healthy. What we found is that people that keep doing those things, yeah, yeah. they're outpacing all of us anyway. Well, I used to say, um, my, my grandma, years ago, I, used to, I told the story, my grandmother lived in Florida and was part of the Senior Olympics. You know, it's all the Olympic events for senior citizens. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and so uh, she was part of the marathon and seeing, you know, a bunch of 85-year-old people running the marathon is just the most inspirational thing. And I was going to go back a couple months later to see the finish because that was going to be really exciting. But, um, <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> but it is, I mean, I'm part of the Masters it's athletic terrible. scene and I know it's horrible. There was a guy, <laughs> Lane and I went to... Uh, uh, Finland for the World Masters Track and Field Championships this is about 10 years ago or so. And there was a guy there who was 101, and he came out on his walker. He did he did field events. So he, they, he came out on his walker. Um, they put his walker down. They hand him the shot put, which by that time, it's all age-graded, so things get lighter over time. Might have been two pounds. I don't know. He just, you know, it's like, Ugh, and it goes, about 10, yeah, it goes about 10 feet, and the entire audience goes insane because we all want to be that guy, yeah. 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 Um, minus the walker, hopefully. But it was, you know, it's so inspirational to, to see that. Um, I, I love the idea. I Also, do you ever see the videos of the guy? He's like... Um, some professional lifter or bodybuilder or something who gets dressed in old man makeup and then goes to Muscle Beach. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and goes and yeah. cleans everyone out. Yeah, and everyone's like, what the? Which is yeah. utterly, utterly brilliant. Um, this is all really interesting. So all right, what have I missed so far about what you guys are up to, or where you're going, or how people can, what, what else people, I'm just imagining there's people who are listening to this who are creative enough to kind of, in lieu of being able to find you guys, think of some way of doing some variation of this on their own. Oh, for sure. And, you know, we always tell people it's not, we're not married to everyone doing nimble. But right. We're married to preventing a million falls. I say the same thing. You know, we're trying to make natural movement the obvious healthy choice like natural food, but it would be, I'd be happier if Nike, Adi, Puma, all the rest started doing what we're doing and it became what is normal. I mean, that would be way better than us being, you know, the only people doing it, yeah. no matter how big we got. To, to your question, I think there's, um, there's a question about, um, our, our view of the world is balance is a vital sign. Right. Tracking balance. Um, if you talk to anyone out there, unless you've been to a specialized um, medical facility, nobody has an idea what their balance is. They may know if it's good or bad, but there's not a number on it. You don't track it. Right. Um, Balance is the combination, or the integration of your brain and your body working very well together. Okay, uh, if, there are, if you got good balance, you're in pretty good shape. It's interesting that Dr. Farsi he came upon this because he was trying to figure out why some patients did better. He's a spinal surgeon. What, people with exactly the same vitals, one person did really well, one person did not do well after surgery. 
the highest correlation he found was balance. Interesting. Think so about that, it, right? It, so is there yeah. a balance measurement that you can then track? Well, we, we actually, there's a, there's a protocol that we have in our app that allows you to, to, to track balance. So um, to, to five minutes to, you do a couple of exercises and you track your balance, okay? But what, are, what are the things that you're doing to track that over time? Well, there's, there's three stages. One is the stability movement, which is okay. moving from feet together to half tandem, which, to full tandem, which is like stand, you know, one foot in front of the other. Heel oh, toe. To, to heel toe. Oh, got it, sir. I got to, it. Okay. To um, one-legged stand. Um, and then doing those eyes closed. Got it. Okay. Um, most people can get to, you know, one legged stand, start closing their eyes because the, yeah. then you got some real problems. Millennials, everybody start falling over when you start closing your I, eyes. I don't know what the, there's no data on this for people who've been barefoot a bunch, mm -hmm. but I was somewhere recently where that was one of the tests they did is, you know, stand on one leg, now close your mm -hmm. eyes. And at the two minute mark, they told me we may as well just stop. Yeah, exactly. And I would argue that that's well, because from um, all the time that I've spent in bare feet. Yeah. Well, later on, yeah. we will talk about the integration of your, you know, what you're doing in the world, which is helping people get in touch with their feet. Is it, right? is it later on? <laughs> we will do this at some point. Um, but uh, just the concept of, of balance and tracking it through your life. Um, yeah, yeah. Your balance is at your best when you're basically 20, hmm. okay? And it declines very, very slowly after that. It's just a natural phenomenon, that's what happens. Um, so let me pause there. Is it a natural phenomenon or is it a phenomenon of lack of use because of what well, you're doing you can work, kick what that, you're doing? You can kick that decline up. You, 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 okay. can, you can re, 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 reduce that decline by doing dual tech yeah, yeah, yeah. exercises at any age. Is, okay? there, is there any data on um, societies where they're not, you know, wearing big, stiff, heavy shoes, not sitting down all day long at their jobs, et cetera. Well, let's talk about Interesting. people yep. that don't fall, right? You look yeah. at the research on super agers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, super agers have a lot of things in common. Uh, they didn't retire, mm. right? Uh, they were valued parts of their, their family and of their community and their society. Mm -hmm. And that value meant that they were doing living and being right. rather than avoiding being a burden. Right. I mean, the American retirement... Um, plan of doing less yeah. is so odd, yeah. right? Yeah, and, yeah. and you look at a lot of the decline we have, it's because we believe that somehow that was normal. Um, right. And there's nothing normal. You look at some sides that keep moving, mm -hmm. they don't have near the struggles that we do. Now, there's a bunch of things. They're also uh, healthy body weights, right. and you know they have some other lifestyle factors. But the reality of it is, is when you treat something, you get the outcome. And if yeah. you measure something, you also get better at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for you, in being barefoot, of course you're going to have better balance because you're so much well connected to the actual stimulus right. that would impair it. Right. So you're going to feel things twice as fast as everyone else because it's not going through some kind of cloud layer. Yeah. Well, it's it's amazing. Um, in the with the maximal shoes, the big, thick, heavy, super padded shoes. Um, I, I I wish I could remember the, the the data, but I was and some of it might be anecdotal. But I was hearing that there's just way more emergency room visits from runners in those shoes because they're high enough that yeah. if you catch an edge just a little bit, it's all over. You're toast because yeah. the brain doesn't have the pattern to recover no. from that. Well, and it's also you know you yeah. all, you can't feel anything to no. begin you with. Have to feel on so the you're, yeah. yeah, you can't feel the ground, so you're more likely to to be a little yeah. off balance. So you may. Made yourself an older adult not being on the ball, <laughs> right? So wearing the big shoes but, is making yourself an older oh, adult. And here's man. the thing about balance decline. So the number one reason people stop playing golf mm. is not strength, mm. it's balance. Interesting. I would think the number one people uh, stop playing golf is they're just tired of yelling, damn it! Uh, <laughs> which, yeah. you know. But, um, yeah, so if your balance decline manifests itself in other things like not hitting the ball properly but right. it's because of your balance decline so if you want to be a super ager right if you, you know working on your balance is really important this is where you and jim klopman would get along quite well because he takes sure he, he, he takes um uh, you know, professional golfers and people, and just shows them how just doing the balance stuff that he's doing improves their game significantly. Yeah. And, but the thing he, he talked about when we were on the podcast was they just don't want to credit it to balance because they don't. It's so because you don't measure it. You, don't, don't, you can't measure, track it, and it seems so incredibly ridiculous that you could get that much of a change from something so simple. Mm -hmm. Because people just don't have again, they don't have this sense that balance is mm -hmm. a thing. So not only do if you don't measure it, you can't track it, but if you don't have a concept for it you just don't even think about it 
Well, and you don't value it. I mean, exactly. We know that cross training is universally helpful for performance. Right. The worst athletes in the world are people that did the same sport their whole life. Mm. Um, they people. It's like this wonderful lottery of survival that the tissue didn't break down. Oh, that's that's totally what it is. It's funny. I saw something not too long ago where they looked at Olympic athletes from I don't know, like the fifties or so, and they all looked like you know like bad CrossFitters. They were all in shape, but they weren't huge. I mean, no. some of these CrossFit guys are monsters, um, mm. and some of the women are too. Uh, and there are a couple of CrossFit women I would kill to look like them. And and now, of course, it's all gone specialized. So ben, then the Olympic athletes were all about the same height, about the same weight. And now you take an Olympic female gymnast next to uh, a male, uh, you know, fill-in-the-blank basketball player, and you would think these are two different species. species yeah. yeah, it's outrageous. So, all right, let's uh, let's dive into um, the thing that is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> and my I feet. knew we'd get there. And I, I didn't care. I didn't know, care if we did or not. But also, you know, it's all around us as well. Um, I will let you lead this because that's partly how this started. Well, I guess we can say when we first met, um, I immediately made the connection that uh, when we were talking, if you're getting more stimulus from your feet, that's going to improve balance. Yeah. So that's when we became best friends. You know. Um, because, you, you know, I started using your shoes, and that's all I wear now. Not because we're friends, because I really do like what they do for, do for me. I, I feel the vibrancy of my feet a lot more, and I know it's impacting my balance. Right. There's no question in my mind that having more stimulus when you're walking, especially, you know, on, when you're outside and walking, and there's d different, you know, pebbles and things that, that you actually feel yeah. that you, don't, you didn't feel before. Well, I like it. You know, you, I like it. people who are listening didn't see that. It's like when you said that you feel yeah. you got ex your face I, got I excited. No, I. Yeah. I was walking on Mount Sinitas near us, and in your shoes the first day, and my legs started tingling. Right. And I go, oh, that's because I'm actually the neurons are firing. Right. Wow, what a concept! If the neurons are firing, the brain's getting that information, and that is what the brain used to say. Oh, that's where my feet are. Right. Okay. Um, I think I'll kind of pay attention to that information now because I'm not I wasn't getting it before. So I made the connection very quickly that um, the more stimulus there in a key function for balance like walking or hiking is going to be valuable for you. There's right. no question. And then after that, of course, I got addicted because like these other shoes don't feel very good anymore. Right. Okay. So I, this is an ad for you, but it's a personal I ad appreciate it. because I felt that, and um, we've I, I feel like it, as as we go forward that you know we're we're promoting. Balance is something that's really important in your life. Yeah. And anything that adds to that, you, you know, doing dual tasking exercises, better footwear, um, brushing your teeth on one leg at night, you know, that kind right. of stuff is going to be more valuable. F it's it's going to be more, it's going to improve your wellness. And I, don't that's know, the thing I don't know why I didn't bring this up earlier. Every couple of years, someone does a study on something that's fundamentally the same basic idea, and that is let's add stimulation to the feet of people who are infirmed. Uh, elderly mm -hmm. people, let's put magic vibrating insoles in them. Mm -hmm. People with Parkinson's, let's vibrate this thing around your ankle mm -hmm. and your feet. It's always some variation of that. Yeah. And they go, look at this, it's amazing. We help people improve their balance. And I wrote a blog post years ago that said, you don't need magic vibrating insoles, just take off your damn shoes and go outside. Mm -hmm. And a couple weeks uh, later, I got an email from a guy, or maybe a couple months, I got an email from a guy who was 82 years old. He said, I was looking for the magic vibrating insoles, but instead I found your blog post, so I thought I'd put it to the <laughs> test, and that was two weeks ago, and I just threw away my walker. Exactly. And, uh, and uh, in fact, the, the thing with Parkinson's, this is a, uh, the Michael J. Fox Foundation financed uh, research from the University of Delaware about this device. I can't remember what it's called. And I reached out to the, the Michael J. Fox Foundation and said, um, I could have saved you $440,000. You know, all you needed was to get people out of, they showed them in these super thick, stiff shoes, get them using their feet again. And I, I'm willing to bet that you'll see the same results. When I, I did a search in our email uh, and on our reviews for, for the word Parkinson's, and I found a number of people who said, wow, it's you know a whole different story when I'm using my feet. And I'm not, of course, making any medical claims, mm -hmm. but it's just one of these things, it, like you said, if you're not letting your brain get the information from your feet that it's designed to get, it just goes, oh, you're not doing that? All right, well, never mind. Mm -hmm. And then if you give it that information again, it's a whole whole different world. Mm -hmm. So yes, it, I, I'm totally looking forward, to, obviously, to 
for innumerable reasons to helping you guys. You know, we've got a list of products, a list of products. We've got a plethora of products, myriad products <laughs> uh, that, that would be helpful. And we, we would love to, you know, get on people's feet so that they can uh, accelerate that process of regaining, getting back to normal and beyond, hopefully. Yeah. And getting closer to the ground, right? I mean, it's, it's a proximity such a no, It's issue, such a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, my, our, our product developer, Dennis, talks about it all the time. He says, the closer you get to the ground, the more stable you are because you're yes. close to so the ground. ground. Yeah. It's, it's simple physics at that point in yeah. time, right? Yeah. Um, but it's also the reality of uh, when you move and you feel, yeah. you're always prepared for danger. <laughs> right? When you uh, move and you feel, you're prepared. And so well, that's why words, we have a new shoe that comes with mace. There we go. <laughs> so, there we go. But yeah. think about this. Like, the minute your toe touches gravel, yeah. you know that it's possible to slip. Yeah. And your brain automatically puts you in awareness mode. Mm -hmm. If you didn't feel that, you never have the sensation. You're not prepared. There's something else that happens that I've noticed is that the way my foot contacts the ground, it, in a way, let's say it's less committed at first. Mm -hmm. And so that way, if something mm -hmm. in, feels incorrect, I'm able to get yeah. off of it more quickly. This is the way humans evolve. Well, yeah. Right? Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, that. and you're always prepared. Yeah. You're always prepared. And when we get lazy and we allow other things to fill in that space, right. the brain just doesn't do a great job and we fall. Yeah. I like to say that, and, and this is true for all the, the parts of the brain that are responsible for balance, that the, the feeling that you're getting from your feet, the information you're getting from your feet, and the effect that it has on your brain, it's not a localized thing. It's not like you have a compartment that does this, and if it's doing that, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's a neurochemical process that affects your entire brain, not your entire brain, giant chunks of your brain beyond just, you know, a, a, the little thing that we think of as the isolated part that's responsible for fill in the blank. And um, it's the same thing when, when people talk about the idea of being barefoot, uh, like they refer to earthing or grounding. I, I The science on that is not very good. It's, it's suspect. It's, is uh, that's a we're both being polite, but <laughs> but the simple thing is that we're designed so that when you feel things that feel good, feeling good is not just a feeling; it is a neurochemical yeah. process that has a bunch of effects, including relieving stress because you don't have to worry about what you're stepping on. And we know that that reduction of stress and the neurochemicals involved in that do have a global effect. It just it doesn't require magical thinking about you know electricity and ions and all these things that don't actually hold up to much um, rigor, rigorous thinking with where I was going with that. Or the thing I like to say, and this will piss off some people, my, I was going to say my apologies, but oh well, here we go, <laughs> is, is the simple thing is like we know, for example, that um, the idea that there's electrons that come into your body and neutralize free radicals and that's what cures all ills, um, that's not the way it works. Your skin is actually highly resistive to, ele to electrical And thank current. God it is. It'd be problematic if it wasn't. Right. Well, what I say is 99% of all people Control. who get struck by lightning um, survive. 100% of trees that get struck by lightning explode. <laughs> so if, you know, if it weren't resistant to electricity, it would go through our body and it would superheat the water and we would do what trees do. Whew, glad we don't. Anyway, so back to um, anything else we can think of that we want to dive into before we say thank you to you and to people who are watching and listening? Other than how can they, if they want to find out more in any way, just to be, uh, have you on their radar and vice versa as this continues to expand, how would you recommend well, they do that? Well, they have a lot of information about balance and uh, training that and videos and things on our website. NimbleScience.com. N-Y-M-B-L Science. NimbleScience.com. Um, you know, we're here to, part of it, just tell the world the story about the importance of balance. Yeah. And we try and do it on our website. Um, if they have a uh, Medicare Advantage program that, uh, that they're uh, involved with that they think might be interested in offering this service, it doesn't, help, doesn't hurt to have it come from the customer. Yeah. yeah. Um, we would love that. Um, we will be doing things over time to get out to, as you say, to get this out to, to millions of people in order for us to meet our goal. Um, but right now, we just want to tell people a story about balance. Yeah. Because uh, I, I think it's a story that just people forget about. Think about it. The first year of your life, you spend almost your first, the entire first year of your life learning to walk, right? That's uh, what you do. That's a lot of freaking work. You, that is you, a you lot build of that up. And then the rest of your life, you take that for granted. You don't think about it again until you start falling when you're yeah. older than me. Yeah. <laughs> and you're okay. old. But that was not easy learning to walk. And yeah. it wasn't easy learning to ride a bike. Mm -hmm. Training that. But, um, and so, but once we get it, we just take it for granted. And that 
you know, with a little bit of work to keep that at, at a good level is something that's just really well. We really do something. We do something more and worse than taking it for granted. Yeah. We assume that because we do it somewhat naturally and everybody does it, that we're doing it well, mm -hmm. and that there's no that you don't need to learn something new or improve in some way, yeah. which is not the case. Like no one would ever think that we're natural tennis players, even though these motions are no big deal. Mm -hmm. But we think that about other things. We think that about writing because we all went to school and we learned to write. Yeah. We all think we can write. And you look at some writing and you go, wow, uh, take that pen away. Um, and we think that about certain movement things, especially walking and running. Mm -hmm. And there's always ways that you can improve. Uh, and it's something that we that's just not part of the, let's refer to it as the, the, the movement lexicon as we age, that you might want to find ways to, to do that more effectively, more efficiently, more enjoyably. And I, and I think enjoyably is the key because yeah. if you're doing it more effectively and efficiently, it is more enjoyable. And it's sustainable. Yeah. I mean, because getting away from episodes is actually giving you permanence. The other thing I want to encourage people to do is don't buy into the lie that just because doing two things at once, you should avoid it. Right? right? It's that whole, well, if you can't walk and talk, well, you shouldn't do that. Well, whoever told you that's ignorant. What you should be doing is you should be trying to walk and talk every day. Right. And that way you can regain that ability. Um, so to challenge a deficit, never accept it as normal. Well, but to be clear, though, what you're doing is a little different than just walking and talking. Correct. Because in the same way that you can drive and think about whatever, um, what you're doing is a novel cognitive task. Correct. So that it really is, it's more than walking and talking. It's walking in, I don't know what you would call that, but... But it's a very different thing. You, may, you gave me a funny flashback. Uh, when I was 18, 19, um, I was a professional magician. I worked at Bush Gardens in Williamsburg. And that I doesn't did, shock me for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 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 was too, I was too old for Ritalin. Um, but the thing that I remember doing is I was doing the same show basically seven times a day, six days a week. Uh, eight shows on Tuesday. And and at a certain point, uh, while I was doing my act and like saying things and doing very complicated things, I remember like calculating how much taxes I was going to pay. Yeah. Or I mean, doing crazy ass math in my brain. And your balance is really good back then. Uh, my balance was insane back then. I used to do a part <laughs> of my act where I did a standing backflip, but I had to do the backflip. The, um, uh, there was a platform that was maybe four feet by six feet. I was, um, the, it was on, in front of a gypsy wagon and there was an overhang from the gypsy wagon that came out about two feet. So to do the backflip, I had to jump forward while doing a backflip to land in the exact same spot. Otherwise I'd catch my feet on the roof of the gypsy wagon and kill myself. And it, it was my gymnastics coach who was a former multi-world champion gymnast. She saw me do that and went, are you insane? <laughs> <laughs> so just a curtain didn't strike well, me as something we weird. We kind of know the answer, don't we? Well, the answer is definitely yes. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, yeah, there are a number of things that I look back at and go, wow, good thing no one told me I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, Tom, Nathan, thank you not mm -hmm. only for being here and having this conversation for the work that you're doing. Um, I, I, I'm looking forward to hearing from other people who uh, want to be part of it and, and want to help move it forward because this is critically important in the literal sense of the word. Uh, and so, again, go to nimble, N-Y-M-B-L, science.com to find out more and to stay on their radar and vice versa. And thank you for being part of the Movement Movement podcast. Again, we're, if you have any questions, uh, people you want to recommend being on the podcast, um, drop me an email at move at jointhemovementmovement.com. And you can go to www.jointhemovementmovement.com to find out all the different ways you can engage with the podcast um, on iTunes and YouTube and blah, 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 all those other places. Again, if you want to be part of the tribe, please subscribe, like, share, refer your friends, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And because um, we are, as I've said repeatedly, trying to make a create a movement movement, making natural movement the obvious, better, healthy choice. The way natural food is, and the only way it's going to happen is with this groundswell of people just like you. So I want to thank you, and as always, live life feet first. Thanks, guys. Thank you.